FEA, he was with Hyundai, and I'd be very interested in your uh, response, whether you think vehicle crash compatibility uh, is an issue and, and, and re requires additional considerations on the part of the companies and how you would respond. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's a real issue. The opportunity to meet with uh, a number of the advocates of the side under ride legislation, not Mr. Young, unfortunately, yet, but uh, a number of the others in the room, and uh, admire them for their passion and opening up this debate. Uh, I do think uh, we have a difference of an opinion on how best to get uh, to improve safety. Um, and uh, your view I think, is your view is how to, is is what on how I think compatibility uh, between cars and trucks is possible. I think uh, Hyundai is a good example. I'm no longer on the payroll, so I think I can say this candidly. Uh, they're the only OEM that actually manufactures cars and truck trailers, so they're unique. I, I don't know of any other OEM in the world that does both, and I am very well aware that they are doing connectivity tests. Uh, that can utilize automated emergency braking in the vehicle. Two-thirds of the accidents that involve trucks are caused by passenger vehicles, largely from speeding and texting. People are paying less attention to what they're doing on the road, and they're hitting the truck. It's a fact. And I think technology has a role to play. So connectivity. The truck, the truck must be prepared to defend itself. Well, I think connectivity could solve a lot of the problem if the brakes are applied, even if the driver isn't aware the car will not hit the trailer. This legislation assumes that an accident is gonna happen. The equipment that was shown in the video is at 35 miles an hour. It's my understanding it's not effective beyond 35 miles an hour. Studies GAO even recommended to you that more study needs to be done on this. The added weight, the structural integrity of the trailer, is it compromised? These are valid questions that I think need to be fleshed out before you proceed with something like this uh, and apply it to all trailers as, as proposed in the testimony. Well, thank you very much. It, it was important to hear from somebody from the industry. Uh, I, I have to ask this question. Ms. Spear, uh, of course, testified about, uh, about uh, she said a dozen people would be killed before the end of the day. Now, what bothers me is I'm used to, I'm an American, I'm used to things getting better, not worse. Uh, I said in my opening testimony, that uh, there was a 10% a, a increase. In one year, between 2016 and 17, a 40% increase in 10 years uh, in uh, crash, f crash, truck crash fatalities. We have got to understand why this is happening uh, in order to get to a remedy. And, and so I, I need some uh, feedback from uh, those of you on the panel. Why are we going the wrong way, and what can be done about it? I think you get a number of answers from this panel. I'll, I'll begin in brief. I, I think there are a lot of factors that contribute to the increase. We don't deny it. It is happening. Uh, the overall trend over several years, it's going down. But this recent uptick is very alarming. It's Ten years. Yeah. I'm going back further, the overall. But I will say the uptick is alarming. I think it's caused because the economy is strong, there's more people at work, there's more people commuting, and quite frankly, the federal government is not investing in infrastructure. There's less room. There's a lot more accidents out there happening as a result of the lack of infrastructure investment in this country. And we're still out there moving the freight. 71% of the domestic freight in this country is moved by truck. Those demands don't go away. So we have to find a ways to be safer given the